Welcome to the Mulligan Concept Instructional Video Module for the Shoulder and Thoracic Spine. I'm Brian Folk. I live in Southern California and uh, have been a Mulligan teacher since 1998, working with Brian Mulligan and the Mulligan Concept Teachers Association, and I'd like to welcome you to this module. I'd like to also introduce my friend Rick Kroll. Rick Kroll from Duluth, Minnesota. I have been teaching with Brian Mulligan since 1996 and we've worked on a variety of projects together, so we're really looking forward to bringing you a review of anatomy and the indications of MWMs for shoulder, AC joint, thoracic spine, and a, a very unique um, technique that Brian's pioneered, spinal mobilization with arm movement. Uh, first of all, we'll start off with a review of the uh, anatomy, but first, let's uh, introduce Brian Mulligan. Oh, thank you, kind words. All right, I'm Brian Mulligan. I'm glad to be here today with these two guys. I'll keep them in, you know, I'll discipline them. And before we start showing these <coughs> concepts, we've got to deal with some theory. And I'm going to let you start with the theory. Great. First of all, when we look at the shoulder for the glenohumeral joint, and it's the glenohumeral joint that we're going to address first. We will go ahead, as said before, we'll talk about the AC joint. Um, let's talk about what would be the primary indication for doing an MWM on, let's say, the glenohumeral joint, Brian. What would be the first thing that you'd look for in a patient to say, today I want to try an MWM on this patient? Can I just say here, with MWMs, with all joints of the body, be it a shoulder, a finger, a knee, or even a big toe, I would apply a mobilization with movement as mm -hmm. an assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, when a person comes in with a shoulder problem, they've got a painful arc, they've got an uh, end range loss of pain with movement, but whatever symptoms they have in that shoulder, the first thing I'm going to try is a repositioning of the bones of the shoulder, and with that repositioning, I'm going to give them a movement. So if we go back to the glenohumeral joint, that, that is something that we can think about, repositioning then yep. uh, of the humerus on the scapula, on the glenoid, and, and move from there. So let, let's go ahead and bring in a model, and we'll talk about specifically um, uh, the points of the anatomy that we want to pay attention to. So we bring in Mr. Bones here. Um, when you apply uh, an MWM at the shoulder, what we want to do is think about, first of all, uh, standing on the contralateral side that you're going to treat. If this is a manual uh, technique, we're going to need to identify the scapula posteriorly. We're going to need to identify the coracoid process, which all of you know is inferior to the uh, distal third of the clavicle. If you start with locating the coracoid process in the scapula for stabilization, we're going to take a mobilizing hand find that coracoid process, move out to the humeral head. It will be repositioning, as Brian just said, repositioning of the humeral head on the glenoid that will be the first indication in our assessment to decide whether the glide is going to be pain-free or not. Um, uh, Brian, will you demonstrate for the viewers a particular technique in terms of hands-on um, uh, with, a, say, a patient? Yes. Can I just move that to one side for a moment? Goody. Can I just borrow you for a moment? Absolutely. Look, normally you'd, you'd inspect the shoulder and look for other signs, but basically you use Athena eminence. You locate ventrally on the upper end of the humerus. There's your coracoid process. You're slightly below it. Now, I don't know whether you can see that clearly, but there we are. My other hand's on the scapula to fixate it so that when I reposition the humeral head, I'm not going to spin them around. Right. There's your stability. It's the direction that's important. Right. On that skeleton, if you have a look at it, you'll see the glenoid fossa is, is, is not directly posteriorly. It's obliquity, and if you took that angle with that, it's 30 degrees. So I am now going to move the, the humeral head at an angle of 30 degrees posteriorly and slightly laterally. So although we say we call it an AP glide, it's not really in the sagittal plane? No. It's, it's in that postural lateral plane. It's not. The sagittal right? plane's 30 degrees to it. So it'd right. be perpendicular to the scapsin plane. Yes. The other point to make is that because I'm avoiding the coracoid process, I've come down a little bit. And when you come down, there's a tendency, instead of going in the direction you wish to go, because you're down, you start to go up. Right. Now, you've got to make sure that there's no superior glide with this because that would impact the humeral head. 
If you're trying to reposition the humeral head, the last thing you want to do is impact it, right? Because that would cause right. pain. So you you're going at 30 degrees, and if anything, just very slightly down towards the floor, just very slightly. Now, what you now have to do is sustain that. And while I sustain it, you ask the patient to carry out, say, the offending motion, which may be a painful arc. And when he does this, he must do it slowly. If he just suddenly shoots his arm up, I cannot stay right. on the humeral head accurately and keep it repositioned. So there I am, I'm in position, up he comes, out slowly, and as he comes out, can you see my hands going with him? And it's quite interesting, if you do that on someone that's got a normal shoulder, there's a crepitus, mm. because bone surfaces are rubbing together that have never done so before, and you can hear it here. Now, points to, this is a mobilisation with movement, but I just bring out a few salient points. One, you sustain the procedure all the way through, right? Okay. You get him to move slowly so you can stay accurately where you should. Did you just come up again, please? When it comes down, now I can, I can relax. Maybe yeah. this would be a good point for us to, to break away and actually look at a model and specifically show those hands positions again on skin where you can uh, see yes. that. So. Yes. So, Brian, before you take us through the, the uh, technique on, on our model here, uh, can you kind of go over once again the, the, the key indications on when you do an MWM and what you're looking for with an MWM? And, oh, no. and this has got to be covered. Yeah. Because MWMs basically are used as an assessment. And when you use them as an assessment, you can quickly judge if they're part of your treatment. And the assessment becomes a treatment when, on applying a mobilization with movement, four things happen. Pill. Uh, the, is an acronym. The first thing is, can I just use them? You, you are now going to reposition the humeral head. And when I reposition the head, P stands for pain-free. There's absolutely no pain. So if there were pain, you're not going to do this. And the patient's going to be reassured because everything I'm going to do with him, that's right, will produce no pain. Not only will the repositioning not hurt him, the movement won't. So that's the P part of pill. Of pill. I, if he has a painful arc, for instance, as I reposition the bones and he takes his arm up slowly up sideways, if this is indicated, he has no pain. So here we are, we're repositioning the surfaces, sustaining them, movement takes place. On the way up, if he feels any pain, he tells me, and I'm not going to use this technique. Now, mm -hmm. you've got suddenly an instant improvement. Does it last? So that's the I. Instant improvement or immediate? Yeah. Now, the LL is the, what the L, well, the LL in the word pill stands for long lasting. So we treat him, gosh, that's better. He comes in tomorrow, it's virtually still much better. If you treat somebody and they keep regressing, then you just don't use this procedure. Mm -hmm. Unless they do something stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they might be doing it. So they activity. went out and went water skiing uh, and hurt it again, kind right. of a thing. So you've so, got to do. Right, the technique again. There's the shoulder fixation, the little scapular fixation. Mm -hmm. There's the location of my thena eminence on the anterior part of the upper end of the humerus. It's below the coracoid process. I've tucked in there, and I'm going to move it at 30 degrees to this particular plane, and slightly down. I sustain it, and our victim raises his arm sideways slowly. Reason for slowly, I can keep on target. Up he comes, all the way, and down. Excellent. Of course, up again. That's perfect. Now, if he has no pain, there are other things we can do.